Hello everybody, it's Crafty Rhea and welcome to another video. If you're new here, I'm glad you found me. Welcome. I hope you like it and I hope you stay. And if you are returning, welcome back. I do appreciate each and every one of you. If you haven't yet clicked that subscribe button, I would love it if you did. Click on the bell so you don't miss any of my videos. Today I'm going to be recycling these two Christmas cards and I'm also going to do a little throwback Thursday. I found something in my stash that I've been meaning to use for a long time and today's the perfect day to do it. Remember this card I made the other day? It's this um, corner fold tuck card. Well, I'm going to recycle two Christmas cards in this same design. The focal image is three inches by four inches, and it's the landscape orientation. So I picked these two cards on purpose because the images were about three inches tall by four inches wide. That's the focal image of this one. And then for this guy, we're gonna cut him just to that side of the snowman. And then I can do three inches tall and it would take this part out. So that's what I'm going to do. For my card bases, I went with some of the new paper that I got from BB Craft. It is their metallic paper. It is, I think it's more of a shimmer. It's a nice thick cardstock and I think it would hold up well for these cards. And I'm gonna just use these as the card base. I'm gonna use the blue one for this card and the purple one for this card. And for my mats, I decided I would use this bronze to mat this since it went really well. And then the silver, this is from a different paper collection. Um, it is from Ollie's outlet in a big paper pack and it had this silver metallic paper. It's very similar, not as thick though, but I'm gonna use it for this card. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Let's do this one first. Then my second card will have the throwback Thursday on it. This one does not. So for both of the card bases, we need to score them, and I think I'll score them both at the same time, one at a time, but at the same time. And I need it to be scored at five and a half. Get out my handy dandy scoring board, and I'm going to score it at five and a half. Now, instead of putting it all the way to the top of my scoring board, I pull it down a little. As long as it's flush with one side, you'll get a straight line. This way, my scoring tool can fit totally in the groove at the top. And I'm just gonna score it at five and a half. And I use my regular bone folder rather than the scoring tool that came with this. This is the Martha Stewart scoring board. If you don't have a scoring board, that's okay. Oh, whoa, hang on here. There we go. I had a little issue there. Um, you, It's okay if you don't have a scoring board, you can use a ruler on a soft surface, like on a mouse pad or a magazine, and it will give you a good score. So I scored this on this side, so I'm going to flip it over and fold it back. This is very thick cardstock, so I think it's important to score it first. So here's the one card base, and then I scored this on this side. I'm gonna flip it over and fold it back and give it a good score. So we're gonna use the purple one first. I'll put this aside. I just didn't wanna to have to dig out my scoring board more than once. Let me give this a really good score. This one I had a hard time with. Okay, and then this will be on there like that. Okay, excellent. So let's go ahead and cut this card apart. And my little paper trimmer, I'm gonna cut the front off first. Okay. 
and then I'll go ahead and cut out the sentiment. I'm not sure if it will all fit. Yes, it needs to be just shorter than the other, um, than the mat. As long as your sentiment is smaller than three and a quarter by four and a quarter or three by four ish, you're okay. I cleaned my paper trimmer yesterday because it had a lot of paper that was stuck to it, but I don't think I got all the glue off because it still sticks to the blade a little bit. And I will save that for the inside of the card. So I know I need my focal image to be three inches high, so I want to measure on here. If I go from the very bottom to three inches, that brings me to the top of the palm tree, and that's going to be perfect. So I'm going to put it in here and just measure it at three and cut. So I have that, and I that's why I picked this, because it was going to be perfect. And then I need it to be four inches wide, and um, it would take off just a little bit on that side, and that will be okay. So let me go ahead and cut that. It's not going to hurt the image at all. So there's my three by four. I think I cut that crooked. Hold on. Unless it's just an optical illusion. Yeah, that's fine. And then that's going to mat on my card base with a quarter of an inch on each side. I seem to think my other one was a little different. Three and a quarter by four and a quarter. Maybe I cut this wrong. Oh, I made this three and a half by four and a half. Let me cut this down to three and a quarter by four and a quarter. That's why that is so big. I thought I was saving time by pre-cutting some of my pieces. There we go. That looks much better. Now I need a piece of decorative paper for this side that needs to measure two and a quarter by four. And I thought I would use this piece and just cut that off since it well, went well with the card. So let me cut it at two and a quarter. And I will cut it to four. I'm going to take a little bit off of each end so that way this part is more in the middle. So it's a little even. So there we have that. And that's what it will look like on the card. I think that looks really good. And I want to save this piece because I might do the top corner with that piece. I will need a piece for the corner to, that measures two and a quarter by two and a quarter. I don't think this piece is big enough. Nope, that's one and a half. So I want to decide how I want to do my corner, what color I want to cut it out of, the purple or the bronze. I am not sure. Let me put this card together and then I will decide. Because the corner I can put on last. I'm going to go ahead and attach that piece
Once you get the measurements down, this card is really easy to put together. And I thought it would be fun to do it with some Christmas cards. A lot of the 12 by 12 paper packs have those cut aparts that are three by four, so that works out well also. So I'm gonna turn this around, measure it, just kind of eyeball where I want it to be. And I'm gonna draw a little line here. And that way I know to put my adhesive on that part and not go over. Then I want to check the back and make sure there's no adhesive and my lines aren't showing. So there, we have that part of the card so far. Now I have to decide if my corner piece up here, if I want it to be gold with this on it, or if I want it to be purple with this. I think I like the gold, so let's go ahead and do the gold or bronze. And this is going to measure two and a quarter by two and a quarter. And then you have your square and you're gonna cut it from diagonal to diagonal. So I'm just gonna put it in my paper trimmer and carefully line up the diagonals on the edge of the blade. Hold it down real good and give it a cut. And you have two of them. And you can save one for another card if you're doing the same colors. I kind of like it in the other color, but I want to use this star on it and that's going to work out perfectly. I am just going to adhere it onto it like that with just a little bit of a, an edge. And I think I'll just have it go all the way, all the way to the end. That way I don't have to worry about measuring and cutting. I just put some adhesive on the back of this and I'm going to line it up on here. And that worked out really good. I'm going to take my scissors and I'm just going to cut right along that line using my triangle piece as a guide. There we go, and I still have that star in there, so that works out great. I'm gonna use a little bit of the, uh oh, art glitter glue, maybe. If I can get it to work right. I have more problems with the art glitter glue tip in the art glitter glue than I do anything else. I'm gonna run just a little bead of the glue right on the very edge carefully and put my pin back in and hopefully my pin won't get stuck again. I'm gonna open that card to get that out of the way and I'm just gonna stick this up into the corner. And just press it down. I want to make sure it's even. I have a few seconds to move it. 
I'm gonna look on the back and make sure it's nice and even. Get any glue off my table, my work surface. I'm gonna use this just to make sure there's no glue underneath where I need it, need the card to go. And then when that dries, I can tuck this up underneath, but I want to let it dry really good first. And this I am just going to adhere to the center of the card. I don't need to mat it on anything since the background is already purple. Since I have this handy, I'll go ahead and use this. Before I push it down, I just want to make sure it's hidden. There we go. So there we go. We have that card done. I think that came out really pretty. And now the other card. We have this card, my background, and my silver piece, which I'll have to trim down because I think I cut it to be the wrong side size. All right, so this needs to be three by four. And if I start it right at the bottom, I can measure up three inches and it'll be, I'll have plenty of room and I wanna cut it just to the right of that snowman. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the front of the card off. I won't be able to use this sentiment on the inside because it's going to be too big, I believe. I'll start with my, first of all, I want to get that let it snow off at a good size because I may use that for something else. I'll put that in my scrap box. And I'm going to start with the bottom of the card just under their feet. And then I'm going to cut this side of the card off because we can get rid of that part of the picture without taking away too much of the picture. And then I'm going to measure up three inches. And then I will measure four inches. So there we have that image. Let me double check and make sure this is the right size. It needs to be three and a quarter by four and a quarter. There we go. And we can mat that on that silver. I'm running out of tape. Almost out. This side has a little mark and I want to cover that mark up. So I'm going to turn it that way. And then that will go on there. But now we needed something for this side. And of course I didn't have enough left over on that card to put something there. So this paper um, is pretty thick and it has a white core. So what I did was I ran it through my um, die cutter with this embossing folder. This is a Cuddlebug by Anna Griffin embossing folder. It would work with any of the die cutters. And I ran it through and I came up with this. So I have these nail buffers and I first went ahead and buffed it up to see if I could get the white core to show. And it did, but I didn't like the way it looked. It didn't 
come out very even and I just wasn't happy with it. So here comes my Throwback Thursday. I have these metallic rub-ons in my stash. I've had them for about 10 years or more. I've lived in this house for 10 years and I brought them with me. So maybe 12, 15 years I've had these. I just checked before the video and Amazon does have them. I have, there's four different ones. I'll show you the back. They are, this is color kit three. There's four different color kits. There's color kit two, color kit four, and color kit one. And it's these rub-on metallic sets. I wasn't sure if they would work or not because they were so old and they work just fine. There's nothing wrong with them at all. So first I picked the white colors. Two of them have a white and it doesn't really show up on this cardstock. So I, instead of the white, I went ahead and used this, this silver, this one here. And this is in um, set number one, and it's just called silver. The one in set number three is called silver blue. And this one, the white in this one is golden white, and the white in this one is white sparkle. But neither one showed up on this paper very good, but this silver looks really good. So we have some metallic ones. This one's a luster. And these are metallic and these I'm sure are metallic. Yep. So what I did was I used my finger and I just coated it right on there and that's what you come up with. Here's it before and there's it after. I'm gonna try using a makeup sponge. These are from the Dollar Tree. And see how the makeup sponge works. If not, I'll go ahead and use my finger again. I do have a baby wipe handy because it makes a mess. Let me get a piece of scrap paper. Just put this piece of paper underneath just because I know I'm going to make a mess. And the um, makeup sponge works great, probably better than my finger. What's nice about these makeup sponges is you can save them and just keep them by whatever it is you use you know, store them in the same area in a baggie and you can reuse them. And I didn't like the blue so much all, you know, um, in between them. I didn't think it blended well, so I just colored that part, some, some of the background as well. You don't have to, you can do it however you like. So anyway, that's what you end up with, with these metallic rub-ons. Like I said, they are still on Amazon. I will put my affiliate link below in case you wanted to check them out. They come in a set of four. I think it's $20 for the set of four, about $20. And they come individually from anywhere from five to $9 each. So the set of four is the good deal, I think. So anyway, there you have that piece. So I'm gonna set that one aside for a minute. I have this one cut to fit right where it needs to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and put tape on the back of that if my tape runner lasts. Thank you. 
There we go. And then this will go right over that. And I'll go ahead and do the same thing on here. Flip it over, mark it with my pencil. And put the tape, I hope there's enough tape for this part. Just enough tape. Yay. And then I will put this down. Then I will use this piece and cut my corner. And I need to cut this at two and a half by two and a half. No, two and a quarter by two and a quarter. I think it's already, it's already at two and a quarter. So I just need to cut it diagonally, or I mean the other way at two and a quarter. And then I will cut it diagonally. Okay, I dropped the piece that I wanted to use. So I will put this up in the corner there. Let me look at this one and see if I like it better. No, I think I like this one better. It's got the bigger snowflake. And I will use my glue for that. You want to just carefully put it up into the corner. I definitely want to get this paper underneath there. I don't want that glue to dry and close it. Okay. And then before I tuck this one, I will make sure that dries really well. And here is my first one and it should be dry and I can tuck that. Now this will be too big for the inside. So what I will do is on a white piece of paper, I will stamp a sentiment and put it on the inside or silver, white or silver. I don't want to tuck this until it dries. Let me see if it'll, it'll work. There we go. It'll hold now. So there you go. Two recycled Christmas cards using that really cool fold and tuck card idea. It was the same idea that I did this card with, and this was a cut apart from Echo Park. So check out that video if you haven't already. And then we have those. And of course it featured these really cool metallic rub-ons and I will link those below. Thanks again everyone for watching. I appreciate all of you. If you haven't yet subscribed, please click that subscribe button. Give this video a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below. Let me know which card you like best. If you haven't checked out my Facebook group, Create with Crafty Rhea, I would love it if you did. And also my Patreon account, I will link that below. I have five different levels of membership over there in case you are interested. I have a card kit and one where I send you a card every month and one where I send you happy mail every month. So those are some fun things over there. Plus you get a sneak peek of my videos, most of my videos, about 24 hours or so before I put them up on YouTube and those would be ad free as well. Thanks again for watching. I appreciate all of you. And until the next video, you know what to do. Go get crafting. Bye bye.